How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel and to what is the last video in 2017 for me. I am a little late on this subject, the subject of this video, but that only means I had ample time to think on what are the top 3 features in the new Crimson Adrenaline drivers for Radeon cards. We'll get to that in a jiffy, but before that, I want to tackle a particular slide that has generated comments and requests here on the channel as well as on the internet. In the presentation for Adrenaline, AMD had this slide showing performance increases in the 10-20% to area, so by all accounts significant gains with Adrenaline. But they didn't actually present all the key data in this slide and that's why it has become confusing for some. Now aside from the bars starting at 80% because everything needs to look bigger and better nowadays, their testing was done by comparing Catalyst Relive 16.12.1 to 17.12.1 Adrenaline. I've also read comments from people asking to test Adrenaline on Polaris, meaning RX 480s and RX 580s, 570s, so on and so forth, since they saw it brought massive performance increases according to the slide. The reality is that yes, these improvements are real, but they're already baked into the last Crimson driver released, 17.11.4, last driver for November of 2017. Their comparison is partially correct in my opinion, as some games they tested weren't even released when 16.12.1 came out. And we know that major game releases nowadays also bring a dedicated driver that optimizes performance shortly after. Now, I couldn't just take that for granted, you know, so I had to test it for myself. And that's why I grabbed my RX 480, which was literally in cold storage for the last month, and tested in three games that AMD also used, Overwatch, Mass Effect Andromeda, and lastly Prey. So let's take a quick look at Overwatch running at ultra settings at 2560x1080 ultrawide. I used Adrenaline 17.12.2, Last Crimson before Adrenaline 17.11.4 and Crimson 17.6.2. The last one is the driver around the 1 year after launch mark for Polaris and this is the reason why I picked it, I thought it would be interesting to see. Pretty clear that the improvements are there in the last Crimson driver from my testing and even the one from June. Although averages are a bit lower, 0.1 and 1% lows seem to have gone up throughout these releases. And I also checked out Mass Effect Andromeda, which released in March of 2017. This means that every driver here contains optimizations that are specific to this game. Naturally, in the version AMD tested with, these were not present, since it was from December of 2016, hence the improvements they showed. And my testing I found even 17.6.2 to perform ok in this game. Since things were pretty cut and dry I'd say, I only added one more game, Prey, and this was released in March of this year, again like with Mass Effect Andromeda, all these drivers already contain improvements. Adrenaline is a wee bit faster here, but nothing significant. Ok, so I called it quits here with the testing since it's pretty clear for me. I repeat, this does not mean that AMD's numbers aren't true, they just show a year to year growth in performance rather than a release to release type of one. But not everybody keeps up to date with their driver on a monthly basis or what have you. Some people may be stopped at a driver that's 9, 10 months or even older since it worked out for them at that time. So upgrading now to Adrenaline will give that performance boost. But there's also other reasons for upgrading now to Adrenaline and I'm going to give you my top 3 picks of the most interesting and impactful things I found in its feature rich software suite. The number one spot is the new overlay slash control center. This works really well, is very intuitive and has all the important features one needs during gaming a button press away. Actually it's two button presses away, Alt and R, which is customizable. And this brings up on the right of your screen the new overlay. Going quickly through them, the Relive tab is pretty self-explanatory, allowing you control over a few settings as well, but for more in-depth stuff you need to open it with the main driver control panel. I'll leave the performance tab for the next segment and the chill one as well, but you can also play around with FRTC, frame rate target control and turn freezing on or off. 
Also, the color tab is awesome and I'll talk about it a little later, but the idea of this overlay and why it's my number one favorite feature is that this hub allows you to easily and painlessly get to the other great features in this driver. So technically it shouldn't be at the top of the list since it's just a gateway to awesome stuff like... Chill, the second most useful feature in this driver. I haven't talked about chill in the past simply because compatibility was so limited, but in Adrenaline they completely revamped it and it has a much wider compatibility list, even works with Vulcan titles. So now I think this is simply an amazing feature. What it does shortly here is dynamically adjust FPS based on the input from the user. This means that no movement equals reduced frame rate, moving the mouse slowly makes the FPS slightly go up and moving it faster FPS goes higher once again. Pressing keys on your keyboard and moving the mouse FPS gets even higher. The benefit is reduced power draw by not rendering extra frames when the user doesn't really benefit from them. I used this feature with Overwatch, which I don't play competitively, but it had very, very limited impact on my performance on a 75Hz FreeSync monitor. The benefit, however, is that average power draw was around 80 watts for the GPU on an RX 480 at 2560x1080 at ultra settings, which is pretty freaking awesome to be honest. Third on my list is the performance monitoring and for people using advanced stuff like Afterburner with the Riva Tuner overlay this is nothing special. But don't be so quick to judge, Afterburner has compatibility issues with some titles causing game instability at times etc. The way this works seems much less intrusive and stats are ok, although polling rate can't be dropped to less than 1 second, which is a little slow. You can also have the choice to hide these stats while streaming for example and you can also export metrics or simply turn on or off some indicators. Sadly there's no option to rearrange their order right now but I think this will change in the future. Ok so I'm wrapping this up with an honorable mention for the color tab as tied for the third place with the performance metrics. This is really nice if you're looking to alter the image you get on your own screen while not affecting your recording, stream or whatever. This is nifty since it's so easy and at your fingertips instead of going through countless hoops outside of a game. I really think that these 3 or technically 4 features really are an awesome addition to Adrenaline and they alone are worth upgrading. My friends, this wraps up 2017 for me and I want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you for watching my videos, for the 19,000 subscribers, wow, and for supporting me in the comments, through likes and by enjoying the content that I create. I have something really special planned for the beginning of 2018, so I'll see you in the next year, but meanwhile, you have yourself a happy holiday season. See you in the next year, bye bye.